All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, buenos dias. Um, I, I don't know about you, but Adam and I talk about Envoy and technologies built on top of Envoy to people all the time. And for the past two years, most of that talking has been to you know two-dimensional people on the other side of a Zoom uh, meeting. And so to see this many people here in three-dimensional form is uh, is pretty exciting for us. So uh, so we're really glad you're here. We hope you're going to get some really useful information, perhaps a spark of inspiration um, out of this workshop. We are going to be talking about Envoy Proxy. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about it in the context of a hands-on workshop that's gonna give you the opportunity to, uh, to, to get your hands dirty just a bit, to get a taste of what using raw Envoy Proxy is, uh, is like. So uh, if you're interested in following along with the hands-on exercise, uh, you know, get your laptop out. If you, have, uh, if you have Chrome installed on your laptop, we've had, we've had great results from Chrome with this, uh, with this particular workshop. Uh, occasionally there can be issues with, with other browsers. Uh, so yeah, so absolutely get that fired up and we'll give you, we'll give you some instructions for, uh, for, for getting connected to that in just, uh, in just a bit. Uh, before we start into the actual uh, hands-on workshop part, what we want to do is, um, is just lay a little bit of groundwork for, uh, for, for who we are and what is Envoy. So, so my name is Jim Barton. I am a field engineer with Solo.io. I've been here for a couple of years now. Adam? Uh, Adam Saya, I'm a field engineer working with Jim and the team. A uh, couple of years too. Happy yep. to be taking any questions here. Yep. So um, if, you, if you have questions over the course of, the, uh, of this session, what we'd encourage you to do, given the size of the audience and the fact that a large percentage of it is remote, what we'd like to do is encourage you to get onto the, the session chat. You can do that by following this bit.ly link up here, bit.ly slash envoy dash chat. And we have one of our solo colleagues here somewhere, Alex, over here, stage right. Hiding in the corner. Yep, in the corner. We keep him back there in the corner. <laughs> um, and uh, he, will be, he will be happy to answer your questions. Just go to the Q&A tab, and I think that can work as kind of a quasi-chat mechanism um, if you have issues. We, we hope that you won't, but, but just in case, Alex will be there to answer your questions. We also, there's a lot of content in the next 90 minutes, and so uh, we hope to have some time for interactive questions, but let's, let's save those uh, for the end, if you don't mind. Yeah, I want to also mention that if you guys have questions right now, or like, I mean, during, af after this workshop, we are still available, we're going to be available hanging out outside the alley here, or at our booths, or, you know, you guys can find us on Slack, we're always happy to answer any questions. All right, so let's get started. Um, so just a couple of slides to, to level set. Um, so back in the mid 2010s, uh, Lyft had something of a problem. They envisioned a future that involved collections of microservices that would be operating their organization rather than a set of static monoliths. You've heard this story before, right? And so you're probably living this story, some of you. And so, uh, and so they were looking at API gateway technology, reverse proxy technology to allow them to publish those services out to their consumers, both internal and external. And what they found as they looked around the API gateway landscape of that time was that most of them weren't really designed for the kind of dynamic environment with ephemeral compute that they faced at that time. And so they made the fateful decision that a lot of you have no doubt made you know, do we build or do we buy? And so in their case, they decided to build. And so they built an internal technology. And with that, uh, with that technology, it went really well. Uh, by 2016, they, they had this thing called Envoy. They donated it um, to the CNCF in 2017. It gained popularity very rapidly. And in 2018, it graduated uh, uh, from, from as a CNCF project. So. A lot of success very quickly, and since that time, its adoption has really exploded across the, uh, the enterprise computing universe. So, you know, why is that? Why is it that Envoy has become so popular? Well, number one, it was built to be extraordinarily fast and scalable. Uh, it's implemented in C++. Um, I know that we use it. Uh, uh, we talk to customers every day who, have, who are managing hundreds of millions of transactions per day in mission-critical applications, all on top of fleets of Envoy proxies. 
Um, and so very fast, very scalable. It's also very comprehensive. It works at both L4 and L7, being able to manage and route uh, requests uh, in, with, with those protocols. Um, it's really built from the ground up to work in a dynamic services environment. So an environment like Kubernetes where services can be ephemeral, they're going up, they're going down, new things are being added. It's not a single static environment with a collection of you know, 10 or 12 software monoliths behind it. It's actually designed for a dynamic environment. Um, it's also built from the ground up to be dynamically configurable. So one of the things that Adam will talk about a bit later as we get deeper into the workshop is the fact that you can use a, uh, it's not just, you know, t traditional API gateway technology, traditional proxy technology is based on a static configuration file, right? So if you change that file, you want to change a route or something like that, often what you have to do is bounce, uh, bounce your API gateway in order for those changes to take effect. Envoy was designed from day one to be unique in that it works with a dynamic uh, control plane. So in other words, you can have a control plane that serves up configuration as, as situations change on the ground, as new policies are added, as new services come in or go away, um, you can have those, uh, those policies served up dynamically to your proxy without having to bounce anything. So it's designed to be that way from, from day one. It's also designed to be a very extensible environment. So Envoy was built from day one to work on a, a filter chain architecture. So if you go to the envoyproxy.io website, you'll see an entire library of filters that you can use to apply various policies and routing techniques to your, uh, to your request. And we'll be looking at a number of those today as we go through, um, as we go through this uh, exercise. Um, all right, it's also very, very observable. Um, so out of the box, uh, you have integrations with things like uh, uh, Prometheus and Grafana, which we'll, we'll show you today. Uh, There's also an extensive collection of metrics that are published from, uh, from Envoy. So um, why Envoy proxy for API infrastructure? There are clearly a number of alternatives that are out there, open source alternatives like Envoy that have been out there for years. Why Envoy? For me, it really boils down to four reasons. Uh, number one, and I think the most important one from my standpoint, is the large, vibrant community that, that, that uh, uh, supports and sponsors uh, uh, Envoy Proxy, right? So um, you look at the, you know, the, the, the list there on the screen, uh, that comes from EnvoyProxy.io, just a sample of the companies who have adopted and, and promote um, Envoy Proxy. It's also, um, We've already talked about the fact that it's extensible, it's dynamically configurable, but also I would say most importantly, it is something that's battle tested. So Envoy's been chosen as the foundation for a lot of the cloud native application networking technologies that are growing very quickly right now. So technologies like Istio were based on Envoy proxy as the sidecar uh, that, that uh, manages traffic going in and out of your, of your service pods. Um, also multiple API gateway Technologies like uh, like uh, Glue Edge from Solo and others uh, are are built on uh, are built on Envoy Proxy as well. So it is it is at this point it is definitely battle tested. It is something that you can that you can put into production environments and when it's properly configured, it will it will work as expected. Okay. So um, what we're going to do today is a hands-on workshop. Um, if you'd like to follow along, that would be that would be great. I think you'll get a lot out of that out of that process. Um, if you want to just watch, we'll actually be we'll actually be doing everything that's going to be part of the workshop up on the big screen here. So you should be able to follow along um, in that fashion as well. But um, what I'd like you to do, if you are planning to follow along, go ahead and navigate to that Bitly link that's up there in red on the screen right now, bit.ly/envoy-workshop. That's going to take you to the Instruct platform. I don't know how many of you have used Instruct in the past. It's a really, really effective platform for these kinds of large-scale interactive sessions. In fact, I, th I think there's some Instruct people in the audience. Just want to give you a shout out there. Uh, it's very solid technology. We use it for a lot of our workshops and big events like this. So, yeah, so go ahead and navigate there, bit.ly slash envoy dash workshop. Um, there'll be a provision compute environment for you there. If you have a browser and an internet connection, you should be able to connect to it. 
We're going to go through five exercises today. Uh, we're going to start off with just some Envoy basics. Uh, Adam is going to cover a lot of the core principles of Envoy and give you a couple of exercises to, to sort of reinforce those. We're going to talk about HTTP Connection Manager, which is one of the foundational filters in Envoy that manages routing of traffic to, uh, to services. We're going to talk a bit about security, and then we're going to talk about observability, which when you're talking about managing collections of microservices, observability becomes a critical component. Adam is going to discuss that. And as well, we're going to walk you through a, a live debugging exercise. So hopefully all the principles you're going to learn in the next, uh, in the next few minutes, uh, we're going to be able to take those and and solve a real uh, common problem that you see when you're working with Envoy Proxy, and Adam is going to walk us through that as well. Now, as a bonus, for the first time anywhere in the world, we are, uh, we're going to be offering a, uh, a certification based on the results of this workshop. It's an Envoy Foundation certification. This is something we've done quite a bit uh, with other open source technologies like Istio and eBPF, um, where we offer certifications at different levels. This is the first one of these we've done with Envoy, so we have a foundational certification that's available today. Uh, feel free to take the exam. We'll post a link to that at the end, and, and we'll actually talk more about that as we go forward. All right, so hopefully those of you who are following along have had a chance to follow this link. Perhaps you've seen a screen like this. At this point, you shouldn't need to enter an email address or anything like that. You should just be able to uh, click the button to add this to your study room. Uh, once you've done that, you should see an interface that looks something like this. So click through the My Exclusives button, and then you'll see the uh, Intro to Envoy Proxy uh, Instruct Track, and simply click on the, on the View Track button there. And that should take you to a screen, something like this one. Um, and at this point, we'll actually start working alongside you. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this track up. All right, do not watch the video that's on there. That's me blabbering on for about 20 minutes about what is Envoy Proxy. Instead, you can listen to me blabber on in person. Um, so you'll see there's a, there's, a, uh, there's a spinning green circle down there. This basically means that the environment is being provisioned. So definitely go ahead and get that process started. It takes a couple of minutes for the environment to spin up. And then uh, once that's done, we'll actually be ready to, to get started with the interactive bits. Okay. All right, so um, as, I, as I said, while we're waiting for everyone's environment to spin up, uh, we, do have a, uh, we do have an exam we'll offer at the end of this. We've been doing certifications now at solo.io for over a year on a number of popular open source technologies, Istio and EP, eBPF being two um, notable examples. Um, it, uh, uh, so it'll be a 12 question exam, uh, requires greater than 80% in, uh, in order to pass. Uh, you can retake the exam as often as you like. However, you have to use a different email address for every, uh, for every retake of the exam. It's just a Google form and we need a unique email address to, to sort those. Um, and if you pass the test, the badge will be issued within a few weeks by our very efficient marketing department and uh, it is suitable for framing or putting on your LinkedIn profile, whichever you prefer. All right, also, if you are as passionate about application networking as we are at Solo, if you're interested in API Gateway and Service Mesh technology, we are always hiring and we would love to chat with you. Again, as Adam said, um, you can chat with us here after the session or we'll also be available in the booth uh, for, for a while this afternoon at booth S10 in Pavilion 1, I believe. Anyway, one of the pavilions, S10. First one, yeah. First one. All right. So let's see if we are ready to roll here. Are we ready? Yeah, we're good. We are ready. So uh, hopefully you're all looking at a screen similar to this with a little green start button. And so press that start button and away we go. Awesome. Uh, I'll try to zoom in a bit. I don't know if you guys see the terminal. But yeah. I think yeah. here. There we, we go, here. <coughs> All right, the guys in the back, are you guys? You guys able to see the, the terminal here? Just a, a thumbs up. Oh, awesome, awesome, thank you. Um, all right, all right, all right. So 
thanks, Jim, for this amazing introduction to why actually we need Envoy. Um, and during this first lab is mainly we're going to cover the basics of like just Envoy components and just technology itself. I guess Envoy, everyone is. I mean, if you guys came here, there's two either there's two possibilities. Either you are new to Envoy technology and want to just understand the basics of Envoy itself, which is great. Or there's also maybe you are using an Envoy technology that's embedded into, for example, Istio or Blue Edge or any other technology, and it's kind of like abstracting the Envoy complexity from you. And it's good to take this uh, workshop to basically understand the basics and be able to debug and, and see basically the magic happening and how things are getting transformed into complex Envoy configuration. So again, the, the, main, the main goal of this workshop, the one one foundation here is to give you the tools to understand basic Envoy configuration. That will probably help you to kind of debug an environment, or just have pointers to be able to ask the right questions and figure out instead of just you know being completely abstracted from your data plane. All right. So um, this workshop is based on we try to simplify it enough. So it's going to be just like a, a Docker stack, a Docker Compose stack. It's, uh, it's going to have a couple components, one demo application, uh, one at Grafana and Prometheus installed already. We're going to have Envoy, and we're going to have like an X auth server we're going to use later uh, during this workshop. Uh, but something to, to notice here is that we are using static configuration. And Jim mentioned it in earlier. Envoy, either we, conf we configure it using dynamic configuration or we configure it using a static file. For the simplicity today, just to understand the basics, we're going to be using static files. But everything done here can be done first on Kubernetes, obviously, and also can be done using control plane like Istio and, control, and like Glue Edge and others uh, do. All right, time to start. So uh, again, you, can, you guys can follow, up, follow with me here, um, like doing the same thing I'm doing on your laptop. Or you can just follow along, and um, you know if you uh, if I think this this environment is uh, available for you for a couple hours, so don't be in a rush. If at the end you're not able to to finish, you still have a couple hours to you know to wrap up your work there, uh, and obviously take uh, the exam. All right, I think we're ready to start here. Um, awesome. Just also a way to communicate. Uh, it, between every single lab, we're going to give a couple minutes for you guys to be ready. So uh, I'll ask you guys just do a, a thumbs up just for me to know that you guys are ready to continue. So if you guys are ready to start, just please a thumbs up. Awesome. Awesome audience. All right. Let's get rolling here. First step is to just start the stack. We're not going to talk about Envoy configuration at this point. It's mainly to get your demo stack example running. And to do this, what we're going to do, we're going to do here is we're going to um, set up the workshop. So just go in the right directory. And then uh, we're going to, again, we're going to use a Docker Compose here. So if you guys want to take a look at the Docker Compose configuration, super straightforward. Uh, we'll have Envoy itself, and it's going to be mounting some files, and we don't get, we don't have to get into details, but it's basically mounting the basic configuration that we're going to, modi going to be modifying every time and restarting, right? Um, then it has an upstream service, which is just a demo service uh, for us, just to test the connection all the way to your backend. And then we have an auth, an auth server, that one going to be used for authentication uh, later in another lab. And we have the Prometheus plus Grafana stack for monitoring, and also we're going to see that in, in the next uh, lab. All right, so first step here, just starting the stack. That's pretty much it. Uh, for that, we're going to do a Docker Compose up. And um, it's probably going to take a couple seconds here to, to pull all the, the images and, and start your, uh, your um, your stack. Um, there's sometimes some, maybe if, if you guys have trouble with internet, I mean, either use your, your data or keep refreshing. If you refresh the page, you won't lose your session. It's fine. 
you know, if you see something stuck, refresh the page. Try to not do it often, but if you really see that a refresh would be helpful, please do. Okay, so now creating the services. We see that everything is done here, so we have our services running. Um, do a Docker PS, and we see a couple components here ready for us to, to demo. So, uh, one thing. The first step here, what we did is that we created a couple components. With, the, with Envoy itself, we used a basic configuration having only the admin interface. Now, what's the admin interface? It's one of, it's basically the way to interact with Envoy from an administri uh, administrative uh, standpoint where you can see the configuration. If you want to see the admin interface configuration, click on Envoy config there on top. If you, look, if you click there, you'll see, if you click on the file here, that is the bootstrap configuration we use for Envoy right now. And we see to configure the admin interface, we just have to uh, set up like a, a port and an address, and that's it. Now the admin interface is one of the really important component for you to understand if you want to debug Envoy. Now the admin interface itself sometimes is masked, right? Like for example, Istio uh, and other technologies, we don't do it in Glue Edge, but there's some technologies that mask the, the, the admin interface from a user because it's risky. Using an admin interface, you can drain, drain listeners, you can fail health checks, you can really interact with Envoy itself in a dynamic manner that can be uh, hurtful to your system. So I, I would really advise to understand how the admin interface works, but not expose it externally, something internal to just check what's going on. Right, so for that, uh, there's a couple things to really be aware in, in the admin interface, and we're gonna check them later, but one that I like looking at every time I start the admin interface on, on Envoy is the config dump, right? The config dump is basically the state, or, uh, the state of Envoy at this time, especially if you're using dynamic configuration, configuration pushed by a server. You wanna be able to just go to Envoy and see what Envoy is seeing, what's the configuration Envoy is having, right? So config dump is one of the most important things you're gonna see in the admin interface. Another thing that I would, that would advise taking a look at is clusters and listeners, but we are not there yet since we haven't created any listener or cluster, okay? Uh, but we're gonna see that in a second. All right, so again, admin interface, super important. We're gonna be using it a couple times um, in, the, in, the, in the first labs, and then we're gonna try to switch to more like a Prometheus and Grafana stack for metrics later. Uh, that reminds me that also the link to stats is really important too. Uh, and you're gonna see that here. Either stats or stats Prometheus, that just you know, formatted for Prometheus, but it will allow you or give you an idea of like why, what's going on, like why a request is failing and then things like that. We're gonna see that later, all right. So admin interface is there, installed. So now next step, what's the, one of the most important components in Envoy? I would say a listener. All right, a listener in Envoy, I'm gonna just switch to this. A listener in Envoy is um, basically a way for us to open a port, simplify it easily, it's just a way for us to open a port in Envoy and be able to interact, like send requests there, okay? And Envoy will inter intercept the request there and do something with it, either write, reroute it or terminate it and so on. So an Envoy listener is basically a network address open on your Envoy. So let's create one listener for Envoy here. To do this, what we're gonna do is just use git check, check out, only have all the configuration, it's gonna get messy if we have to do it you know, manually. Um, so we use git to kind of switch configuration from a lab to another. In this case, if you go to the admin interface, uh, ad, uh, the Envoy configuration, we see here that we have only the admin interface configuration. Now let's do a, a git checkout of lab one, two. Do this. If we go back to the Envoy configuration, we see a little bit more content here. And what's important to understand here is that we added one static listener that's opening a port 8000 on Envoy. Now, 
a listener always needs a filter, and it's a good time to, for us to introduce the second important concept in Envoy is a filter. So we start with the listener, is the one taking the connection, and is the one you know we, we talk to as a client. Then there's a filter. A filter is the one processing that connection and that request. There's two types of filters. There's the TCP filters, we deal with an L4 type level where we can just do a kind of pass through TCP or a proxy somewhere. Or there's a, an L7 type filter that will be able to attach to the HTTP connection manager we're gonna be talking about later. In this example, we're just using a simple filter called direct response operating at the L4 uh, level. We see here it's a TCP, it's a network, it's a network filter. And what it does here, it just return hello world to any connection on that specific port, okay? So once we got this configuration, we'll have to restart Envoy quick just to pick up this. And to do this, we're gonna do a restart. All right, there you go. I do a restart here, <coughs> that's good. Now, Envoy, is picking up the config. If you, again, if you wanna check the config dump, you should be able to see the listener added to the Envoy configuration itself, not only in the static file. And if you do just a curl here, we get hello world back, right? So at this stage, we have only a listener and we have a filter, it's taking the communication and returning hello world. All right, now time to one um, okay, okay, so I want to talk about something before. Re something really important in Envoy, and Jim mentioned it earlier, is be able to observe what's going on. And Envoy has a ton of metrics, really valuable to understand what's happening. So during this workshop, we're going to be pointing to some metrics that we think they are valuable, but we invite you to check all the lists to see exactly what you, you, you're looking for. Um, so. One thing to do here, if you go back to the uh, admin interface, before if you guys clicked on listener, there were nothing here. If you click this time, we'll see that we added one listener listening on 000 8000, okay? And this is a really important debug tip here. If you see Envoy not receiving any configuration, just like this kind of a, a connection failure, not like, for example, the network, like the, the server is not there at all. First thing to verify, if your listener is created, okay? You need to check first if basically the door is open, right? Okay, um, now we talked about listeners, we talked about filters. A third really important concept in Envoy is Envoy clusters. A cluster is a grouping of addresses to point to a certain destination, okay? So you'll think about the cluster as a representation of a, a backend, a backend service, for example. Either it can be your local community service or it can be pointing to an external service somehow. But basically just a collection of IPs that Envoy can use to interact with the backend system. In this case, Earlier, we just terminated the request right there, but this time, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna route traffic all the way to a backend. To do this, we, again, we're gonna check out, this time, uh, lab one, two, one, three, sorry, and if you go back to the Envoy configuration, this time, something is added here, which is a cluster, okay? A cluster definition is pretty straightforward. Here we're just pointing to a DNS address upstream 8080. <coughs> upstream again is a reminder, it's just a, a demo application we installed with our Docker Compose stack, okay? So here we have a backend service. Now that we have this name and this cluster called upstream defined, let's define the routing to that. And I mentioned earlier, using TCP filters, you can do a TCP proxy routing all TCP to a backend. In this case, we're using the TCP proxy filter instead of the direct response filter we had previously, right? So here we're doing a pass through all the way back to the backend, and if you see, we're just referencing the cluster upstream that we defined, which is our demo application. 
So let's now that we had the we have the configuration again, let's restart Envoy to pick up this and let's let's make a call here. Um, we are going to make a call to our backend system. There you go. So here we're getting hell back. Hello back is coming from our backend system. Raw TCP going through Envoy to our backend system that returned hello back. Okay, so that's really an important concept to understand here, uh, the concept of clusters. Because if ultimately, if you're dealing with Istio or you're dealing with any other technology, behind the scene, the control plane is transforming a set of like Kubernetes service, for example, to a set of APIs that Envoy understands, right? So if you see that your Envoy is not able to interact with, let's say, an en uh, like a sidecar, Envoy sidecar, not able to interact with a certain service, first thing to do is to verify if, if the cluster is defined there. Does Envoy know about that specific service you're trying to reach? So something to keep in mind. All right, um, just I want to show you certain diagrams. If you want to just you know, look at it, you can just uh, expand this on the side. And here is kind of the example that what we did during the lab one. What we did, we have a client talking to a listener that we just opened on the port 8000. It's going to talk to a set of uh, filters. It can be one or many, right? It's a filter chain. So it can chain multiple filters to do multiple things, one on top of the other. And then uh, route to your backend service. All right. So, and one last important thing here, again, if you have a cluster defined, you need, you, you can check the IPs that actually the endpoint is Envoy is trying to use. If you go back to the, ad, the uh, admin interface, just go back here with the arrow, and this time going under clusters, so we can find it here. Cluster. Up, cluster. up top, second one. Oh, thank you. All right, clusters. In this, now we see that we have an upstream cluster defined, but it's really important here, we see the endpoint also. We see this 172.18.05 defined. This is our IP that we're trying to reach, right? This is our backend service. Um, something really into, important to, to notice, like debug tip again. If, even, even if you have the cluster defined, Try to check the cluster uh, path in the admin interface or the metric, right? Try to see if the endpoints are defined, right? Okay, I have the upstream cluster, but do I have a, uh, an endpoint? Do I have an IP defined that talks to this service? Okay, I have an IP here. Then check if the health check is passing. Is this backend endpoint healthy, right? This is important to note. All right, that was the fundamentals of a couple components, really important in Envoy. So again, thumbs up if you guys ready to continue. Sweet. Yeah, okay, HTTP 0.9 news just for curl. Like, we're dealing with raw TCP and somehow curl doesn't handle it well. Um, that's it. If when we're gonna switch to the HTTP connection manager, we won't, we won't deal with this situation anymore. Um, all right, awesome. Back to you, man. All right, <clears throat> very good. Thank you, Adam. So um, that was a great introduction to, uh, to the basics and the core concepts of Envoy Proxy. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the green check button at the end of the first exercise. That will hopefully say everything is correct and we'll load up the next challenge, which is we're going to talk about HTTP Connection Manager. So um, Adam worked with a couple of examples with, um, with TCP uh, and he also, uh, in some of his examples, used uh, you know, direct responses straight from the proxy. There was not even a back-end service that was, that was handling the response. Um, that's not the most common scenario, when, at least with our customers, what we see uh, using Envoy Proxy. Very commonly, 
what we see is uh, people who are using HTTP Connection Manager to be able to process requests at layer seven, uh, to be able to apply, you know, let's say transformations, to apply uh, uh, policies based on headers and that sort of thing. And so you need the L7 access in order to do that. So. Envoy has uh, um, L7 capability, and the core the core of that is something called HTTP Connection Manager, and so that's what we're going to explore in this um, in this second exercise. So, um, what we're going to uh, what we're going to do here? Let's go ahead and move into the correct directory and check out uh, check out Lab 2-1. And so um, I just want to show you first uh, graphically what we're going to be doing this time. So it's a little different, right? We still have a client. We still have a listener at HTTP 8000. Now we're going to be going through the HTTP connection manager is the only filter um, in our filter chain. It's going to route to uh, our upstream service, which is simply going to give us back a, a hello world example. Uh, I'm sorry, a hello world response. So. Let's take a look at um, let's take a look at the configuration. So here is um, here's what we've added here. So you can see the HTTP connection manager filter specified, and here are the real the real key bits right here in in this section. Um, you can see we've, uh, we, have, uh, we have identified a virtual host here that we're calling upstream. Um, it is listening on domain uh, hello.envoyproxy.io. So if it sees that um, in, the host, in the host header, um, that's going to be like passing the first gate for this filter to, uh, uh, to fire. You can see we also have a, uh, we have a route defined. Okay, so we're basically saying um, any request that has a prefix the path prefix begins with hello. We want to capture that. We want to capture that request and we want to take that request and then we want to route it to this cluster called uh, upstream, which is basically the, the little hello world app that's written in Python that, that's running behind the scenes. Okay, so that's, um, that's pretty much all we're doing for this, uh, for this first example. So let's go back. Let's go back here. We've already applied um, We've already applied that config. Now, what do we need to do? Because we're not using a dynamic control plane, uh, we're just using a static configuration file. Every time we make a change like this, we have to restart Envoy to pick up the new config. Um, as we said before, Adam's gonna talk a bit about control planes more in the, uh, in the end, and uh, you'll get some sense of the value that they can add here. So you'll notice now, our curl command is, uh, we, we don't have the HTTP 0.9 requirement before because this is not um, this is not TCP, this is an HTTP connection. You can see it's going to localhost 8000 uh, with, a, with a path of hello. You can also see we're specifying the host header, hello.envoyproxy.io. And uh, when we do that, right, uh, we, get, we get a hello world back just as expected. Now, you know, just to show you kind of a, a, a counter example, let's say we didn't have the host proxy specified properly. What do you expect in that case? The filter is not going to match and you're going to see a what? 404. A 404, excellent. Well, you didn't actually see it, but if we do this, then you'll actually see there's a 404 if we, if we don't specify the host header correctly, okay? All right. Now, as we've said before, really a core bit of value from Envoy is observability and metrics. And so, not surprisingly, uh, you're going to see that with, uh, with this example as well. So um, Adam showed you just briefly the admin interface. And so you can go in here and hit, you know, hit the stats interface and you can actually see this whole raft of metrics here. Um, of course, you can also, we can just access this via curl and then just uh, 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 filter out the, uh, the bits that we, that we wanna see. And so in this case, um, you can see here, here is a metric that indicates um, you know, there's been one request that's been completed successfully uh, with this uh, since Envoy has restarted. If we go off and uh, let's say we run the, um, we run it again, right? We run the curl command again, the correct one, and uh, we, um, and then we, we take a look at that metric again. Not surprisingly, you can see that metric has been updated to two uh, from one. So, 
Um, so the, uh, I definitely, as you, as you get deeper into Envoy, if you haven't been there before, we definitely encourage you to spend some time encouraging, uh, 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 understanding this vast metrics library that Envoy uh, publishes. Okay, uh, there's also a Prometheus instance, as Adam talked about, that is, uh, that's included with this example. We're not going to go into this deeply right now. Adam's going to cover that in lab four on observability. But you can see if we wanted to, we could go take a look and actually see this same metric, you know, graphed out using, uh, using our little uh, Prometheus setup that we have uh, in this example as well. Okay, so let's, uh, let's run our check on that. And, uh, <laughs> oh, wait, oh, I said, aha. Let's not run our check on that because we're not done yet. All right. Um, I got to the bottom there. I thought it was at the end of the lab. All right. So uh, we're going to go through one other example with HTTP Connection Manager. So what we showed you first was just a very simple, you know, hey, here's a request, route it to this backend server. You know, it works, everyone's happy. Uh, now we're going to deal with something that's a slightly more real world situation, which is, let's say our backend service is unreliable, right? In fact, let's say it's really unreliable. In our case, uh, we're going to simulate a service that actually fails 80% of the time. Hopefully you don't have any of those, but if you do, you can, you can appreciate what we're going to do here. So um, what we're going to do, if you look at it from a graphical standpoint, um, it's, it's pretty much exactly like the previous example, except on the connection from the upstream cluster to the upstream service, we're going to modify the Envoy configuration to add in some retry capabilities. Um, this is gonna be very basic. There's a whole uh, uh, a library of, 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 of enhancements you can provide, but we're just gonna show you the basic configuration of how to do, um, how to do these retries, okay? So let's, um, let's dig into that. So um, first of all, what I wanna show you is the way we're going to trigger this unreliable behavior. So we have a little Python server back there that's operating as our upstream. And so our Python server pretty stupidly, if it sees the header unreliable set to true, then it's going to fail 80% of the time. Hopefully your you know, app developers you work with are a little smarter than that. But um, so let's go ahead and try this out. And um, so if we run this curl here, with unreliable set to true, you'll see that 80% of the time, you're gonna get back a 500 uh, internal server error. Now, some of you will actually see that request succeed. If you do, simply retry it, it will most likely fail on the next, uh, on the next occurrence. All right, so what can, we, what can we do about that? Well, let's take a look at how, we have, how we've modified the configuration here. Let me get a little more screen real estate. And so, well, we haven't done anything yet because we haven't, we haven't brought in the new configuration. So let's, uh, let's restart our Envoy proxy. I think you missed the checkout. Did, did, I, not, did I not do the, uh, the checkout? Yeah. Yep, all right, so where was that? It must be back up here somewhere. Somewhere there it is. Yep, skipped right over that. All right, so you wanna be sure before you do that, you wanna check out uh, lab 2-2, which will be the, uh, uh, the, the retry part of this lab. All right, so once you switch over to that, now you go back to the Envoy config and you'll see, um, you'll see there is a change and the change is right here. So within the context of this uh, HTTP connection manager config, we have added this retry policy right here. You're noticing um, we're only retrying on certain conditions. So Envoy has a number of conditions that you can specify. You can also, you can also aggregate them into a, into a list, um, but there are only certain connections that we're gonna retry on. In this case, we're only gonna retry on 500 class internal server errors. Um, and then we're also going to limit the number of retries. So we're only gonna allow 10 retries. If we see more failures than that, then, then we're going to punt. There's a whole host of other things you can specify here as well, but again, this is just a, a, basic, a basic configuration to show you the, uh, uh, the, the, the foundational idea. All right, so now if we restart Envoy, we should see some good things happen. 
So note this time, we called it in exactly the same way we did before. We passed in the unreliable flag, but this time uh, what we see is that, um, is that it returns true. I mean, it returns a 200 okay. Now, the question is what, um, what happened there, right? Um, did, did our retry mechanism actually work? And so to confirm that, what we're gonna do is we're going to run, we're gonna run this command right here to take a look at the logs of our, of our upstream service, okay? Now, if you look very carefully, what you can see this last, on this last time that we executed the service, you can see the first two times, uh, actually, it looks like it was just these, these two here. Maybe you should do like a, a, some spaces and rerun the curl. I think yeah, that's yeah, I think that's a good idea. So let's, uh, yeah, let's put some space in here. You can see it more clearly if we run this again. All right, so you can see the request returned true. Oh, and, uh, and actually, in that time, of course, it worked the first time. All right, well, you know, one out of every five times that's gonna happen. So uh, let's try again. Okay, here we go. And so you can see what happened on the last time. The first try, um, you know, this is pretty good. We actually got it on the first try and then the second try. We should go to Vegas next week and we <laughs> try our luck. Let's do it. Uh, so you can see the first attempt fail with a 500, but then, you know, completely without client knowledge or, or, you know, the Envoy proxy intervened and said, hey, I've got this retry configuration. I'm going to retry that. And on the second occurrence, it succeeded. And so it returned a successful, uh, successful 200 code to the, to the downstream client. Okay. All right. Hopefully that makes perfect sense. Now, you will not be surprised, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll not be surprised to learn that there are also metrics associated with these retry capabilities as well. So if we take a look at that, um, here's, a, here's a set of metrics that give us a lot of um, useful information about what we're seeing. You can see, first of all, at the bottom of that list, we see that there's a total of five requests that have been issued to this upstream since the Envoy, uh, uh, since the Envoy proxy was restarted. You can also see that of those, of those five, um, two of them, uh, two of them succeeded, or sorry, three, that's right, we ran it, right, we, we, yeah, right, we ran it the first time, then we re-ran it twice to show the logs. And so there are three of those that succeeded, just as expected. Um, you can, uh, um, you can also see that there were uh, a number of retries. So right here, you can see the count of the number of 500 uh, responses that we got and the number of retries. So each one of these elements, this, this HTTP connection manager filter is emitting metrics that are associated with, with all of these capabilities. And you can see we're seeing those, uh, we're seeing those here, uh, both, uh, both in the aggregate as well as, um, as well as broken down by particular error codes that are being returned. All right. So that's just a, an introduction to some of the things you can do with HTTP Connection Manager. We're gonna be using it as we go forward in the next exercise as well. So if you haven't already, hit the check button at the, um, at the bottom of your screen and let's go forward to the next lab. I think we can do a quick check. Who is ready for oh, yeah, the next thank one? You. Thank awesome, you, Adam. Awesome. All right, cool. Great. Great. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about securing traffic using Envoy. And we're going to discuss two separate topics here. One is, uh, you know, really, really basic, something that every, every one of you, no doubt, has probably done, which is you're going to, we're going to set up TLS configuration to encrypt the communication channel between the downstream client and the proxy. So we're gonna take a look at that. And then we're also going to uh, investigate a second uh, Envoy filter, which is the XAuth auth Z filter. So we're going to add in a little custom authorization service into the mix, and we're going to configure Envoy to, con to properly authorize our request before we actually go off and hit the upstream service. So we'll show you how to do that with Envoy as well. Okay. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's go to the correct directory. Let's check out the, uh, the configuration for this exercise. And so here is what we're going to do uh, in graphic form. We're again going to have uh, a downstream client. 
we're going to be talking to a different listener this time. We're going to be talking to an HTTPS listener that's listening on a different port, 8443. This communication channel is going to be encrypted, and then it's going to delegate similarly to what we did before in this first example through HTTP Connection Manager, which is going to route to the upstream cluster uh, and then ultimately the service that backs that. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to configure something called a downstream TLS context, and we will provide uh, some certificate information in the context of that. Let's look at that over here. So you can see uh, one change we made was simply changing from port 8000 to 8443. We didn't have to do that. It's simply a convention based on you know, the traditional values for HTTP versus HTTPS port values. And then you can see we've added this bit of configuration, this transport socket stanza into our Envoy config. Everything else is the same. So you can see, um, you can see we're using this downstream TLS context. Um, it's, we're actually configuring this to require a client certificate be presented. And then we're specifying the, uh, the certificate chain that, uh, that, we're going to be, that we're going to be using. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, we're using self-signed uh, certs in this, you know, in this lab exercise, uh, so that will that will uh, uh, change things just a bit from what you'd see in the uh, in the real world. But you'll definitely get the idea. Okay. So, uh, because we've changed configuration, we again need to restart Envoy. And now, what we're going to do? Let's just let's test the same. Uh, let's test what we had before and just confirm that that no longer works. So if we try to hit HTTP, uh, uh, the HTTP listener at port 8000, not surprisingly, that's going to fail because that listener is no longer active. Um, let's say we just correct, let's say we just correct the port number, but we don't correct the protocol to HTTPS. Again, you can see that's going to fail, right? Because the listener is expecting, uh, expecting HTTPS and it's not, uh, it's not getting that. Um, and then finally, let's, let's, get, uh, let's get everything right. Uh, now you get back from curl, you get a warning, hey, this is a self-signed certificate. Are you sure you're, are you sure you're okay with this? And uh, of course we are, so we're going to add in the minus K flag to basically say ignore that warning. And now you can see we are, have a properly secured connection to our service, to our proxy that's delegating to the service and returning the value we all expect. Okay? So that is a very quick tour of configuring TLS in Envoy Proxy. All right. Now, let's take a look at something that's a little more complex. And this is, this is the, the more, probably the most complex flow we're going to use in this, in this exercise. And what we're doing is we're adding another element to our filter chain here. And the, the element we're going to add is the XDOF Z, the authorization filter. So this, this is a standard Envoy filter that you can you know, pick up open source. You can plug it into your, Envoy, uh, into your Envoy instance. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you the ability before you actually process the request, you'll be able to delegate first to an auth cluster. And the auth cluster will simply take your request and based on whatever criteria you specify, will give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down, this request is acceptable or this request isn't acceptable. By default, you'll get back a 403 if it is unacceptable. And if it is acceptable, it's simply then going to delegate on to the second step in the process, which is to your upstream cluster, uh, which is exactly the same one that we've been using before, okay? I just right. want to just mention something quick. If you guys want to take a look at the code or like all this example, yeah. uh, we, have, we have it on public GitHub, so you can take a look at the X auth code that we use. It's super basic. Yeah, it's all, it's all right here. If you, if, you, um, if you drill down into this, um, you can tell Adam and I spent, you know, a t we spent a ton of time <laughs> working on this. Um, right. We were actually thinking about closed sourcing this code, and, you know, but Instead, we'll just we'll put it out there for you. So yeah, you can see this is our this is our sophisticated auth service. It's just a simple uh, Python server that looks for hey, is there a header called uh, called authorization uh, in the request, and does it have the value of workshop? If it does, thumbs up. If it doesn't, thumbs down. Okay, simple stuff. And our uh, our upstream service is equally sophisticated as as this. 
All right. Okay, so let's check out the um, let's check out the new configuration here. And what you're going to see when you look at the differences, um, notice what we've done here in the context in the context of our of our filters, we have added in this X auth Z filter, and you can see what it's going to do is it is going to delegate to this cluster called auth, right? We weren't very creative with our naming conventions either. Um, and, uh, and you can see we've also added now an auth cluster with you know, the location where, where it can be reached so that that'll be the first step in that process is for the request comes in, the X auth Z filter is gonna pick that up. It's going to send it off to the auth service. The auth service is gonna give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If it gives a thumbs down, we'll return a 403 forbidden back to the client. If it gives a thumbs up, then we will delegate the request off to our upstream server and allow it to do whatever processing it wants to do, okay? All right, so again, for the fifth or sixth time, let's restart Envoy. And then let's test out a couple of, uh, let's test out a couple of options here to see if this is working as expected. So at first, we're going to test this using exactly the same uh, call sequence we did before. Um, and what do you see? So we did not supply the authorization header. We don't supply the authorization header. What happens? We get back the default 403 forbidden response. So that's working as expected. Let's, uh, let's try something slightly different. Let's, uh, let's say we provide a bad authentication key. Is that going to work? Yep, just like expected, it gives us back a 403 forbidden code. And then finally, let's do the, uh, let's offer the correct header with the correct value. And now you can see we get back a 200 okay. So it's working just as expected. All right, so that's, that's the basics of how to use the, uh, uh, the, the out of the box X auth Z filter that comes, with, that comes with Envoy. All right, now you're not going to be surprised to learn that like every other filter that comes with Envoy, the X auth Z filter publishes a, a, a nice collection of metrics that you can use to understand what it's actually doing. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that. Take a look at some of the uh, take a look at some of the metrics, and then let's see if we can interpret uh, interpret what's going on there. So, what you'll see is that here um, here at the top, you'll notice that the upstream for the or the, the X auth Z that delegates to upstream, there was one request that was that was okay, right? That was the last one, but then there were two requests here that were that were denied. Okay. So that's all good. You can see also similarly here um, at, the, at the ingress level, we also, so we got uh, metrics that were published at the individual upstream level. We also get metrics that are published at the ingress level. So if we had multiple services running here that were, that were fronted by, by uh, this, this same filter, we would see this broken down by different upstreams and then aggregated here into this uh, HTTP ingress set of metrics. Okay, so you can see that. Again, um, we, have, um, we have two that were denied uh, from, the, from the ingress point and one that was okay. You can also see at the bottom, at the listener level, you can also see a breakdown by response code. So you can see, right, there was one that was a 200, uh, 200 class response and two that were, uh, that were 403 class uh, responses and a total number of requests that were completed for three. So you can see how this produces a whole lot of metrics that are really useful uh, for you observing what's going on in the system. Adam is going to talk about that in just a minute in more detail. Okay, so at this point, we are done with lab three. I hope that was helpful in understanding some of the Envoy security mechanisms. Now we're going to hit the check button and this time it's going to say everything is good. And so that's going to move us over to lab four and I'll turn it over to Adam. Are we, 
be good with a thumbs up to move on to lab four. All awesome. Right. You guys have been you. killing it today. That's great. Uh, um, I'll be asking a quick question here. If something goes wrong in your environment, what's the first thing you have to look at? Metrics, logs, things like that, right? And we saw during this workshop that Envoy just produces a ton of data that is really useful to debug and see what's going on, right? So during this lab, what we're going to do, we're just going to take a look <coughs> at Prometheus already configured to basically have an aggregate for all what we saw previously, okay? So if you go back to, if you could start this workshop and we go under Grafana, Grafana here, you can just, you know, use, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Grafana, basically the default credentials admin admin. So use admin admin, you're gonna be able to log in here, just skip this, you don't have to, to put a new password. And we're gonna take a look at what we have. Uh, here, just try to take the 15 last seconds. It's gonna be useful for us just to see what's going on. And also, in terms of upstreams, try to take the upstream one, which is our find, like the demo application, right? So here, this is just an aggregate, right? Using Grafana, if you guys are familiar with, you can always create your own panels, use all the metrics we used to have, like define. You can, you know, create your alerting if your system is down and so on. So su something super important is if something is going down, check your metrics. That's the first thing to do. Like why, I mean, what's happening there? It's gonna get you like uh, some, some key data there. And then after that, obviously, you're gonna check something else, which is locked. And we're gonna talk about this in a second. So here um, we have just a collection of some metrics that are important. That can be used as a framework, or you guys can do your own, create your own uh, dashboards. Uh, we saw that we have all the night because we added the odd filter in the third lab. We saw that we have couple of the night there. That's because of that. For regarding the upstream, the, cl the cluster upstream, um, cluster membership, we see that everything is healthy, everything has been good for the couple past uh, minutes, 15 seconds. Uh, 15 minutes, sorry. We see the success rate is, is good. The only th time when something didn't happen well is because we did this unreliable header and so on. So connection timeout, we see there was no connection timeout, which is, which is awesome. Uh, we see some 400s mainly because of our 403 uh, X odd denied there and, uh, and so on. So really valuable to understand the core concept of like dealing with metrics. If you debug your environment, if you set up Envoy, you need to set up your metrics either directly with Envoy or if you're using like something like control plane and so on, if you're using like, a, uh, like an Istio or Glue Edge, so on, to always have some sort of automatically pushing, injecting this metric collection to your Prometheus. Sometimes it even comes with a Prometheus server with you. All right, so that was super quick for just uh, Grafana, we're gonna go back to this like in a couple seconds for a debug exercise. Um, but another thing that is, I think even more important is logs, right? Something goes down, something doesn't work. Okay, metrics will alert. We're gonna receive a 3 a.m. notification that everyone loves. Then we're gonna have to check logs, right? So let's see what we can do to add logs to Envoy. To do this, we're gonna use something called access logs. So access logs are a really useful piece of data that is produced by Envoy on each request. If Envoy intercepts a request and something happened, either good or bad, like if, if everything's successful, you're gonna have a log saying, all good, 200, no problems there. Now, if something goes south, what do you have to do? Check also the access logs and check to see what Error, which error code was uh, was provided and, and so on. So let's uh, let's just set up the X logs quick here. To do this, let's check out the lab four dash two. And oh, sorry, I have to go in the Envoy folder. Check out lab four dash two, and let's take a look at the um, Envoy configuration. This time, 
to add access logs, we added that on our HTTP connection manager. It's basically just one line. OK, if you add the one line type thing, it's just using the default format that I'm providing here in the lab that you guys can check. Uh, that one here, I think, is better for me to squeeze it this way. But you can configure your access logs like you want. You can add specific data, like you can print specific headers that you care about, headers coming from your client and things like that. You can print uh, what's the uh, client IP address, for example, things that are really important, uh, which upstream, where the traffic should be going, and what kind of answer you guys got from the upstream. So all this is super valuable to have on, in your access logs. Now, one key thing, if I have to advise for only one thing to watch for in your access logs, is the response flags, okay? Response flags in Envoys, Envoy are super, super important. If something goes, if, if, thing, if everything works fine, you don't have any response flag. You're gonna be a dash, everything's fine. Now, if everything is not working fine, you're gonna have a response flag, which is a two letter or more uh, code. And this code will tell you why, at least give you a good hint on why this re request failed. You're gonna grab that response flag, go on Google, go on the Envoy documentation, match that to what's the core, what, why actually, what the explanation around that specific response flag. And from there, it's gonna give you the good hint to continue your debugging journey, okay? So again, response flags. So let's just restart the configuration here to pick up our access logs config. And now let's, you know, make a couple calls and see how things are printed. Let's do this. All right, so I just made five requests here to my backend again. But this time I have access logs uh, on. So if I go to, if I check the logs of Envoy this time, I would see my access logs. And this is, if you, find, if you guys see the, the five last lines here, this is access logs that can be collected, right? You guys can collect that using um, your log collection metric, uh, you know, you have your and so on, you're aggregating this data, sending it to any, anywhere you guys persisting your logs and you guys can query on it and so on. But this is really important here where you see that we, using the basic access log format, we see that we're making colon slash hello. Uh, we got a 200, it was a 1-1, one -one, HTTP 1-1 one -one con uh, connection. Uh, we see um, basically uh, which host was using, uh, we use and which upstream <laughs> IP we try to target. Something important here is that the response flag is not provided, is not uh, implemented. We should we see a dash. Awesome. Dash means good. All right. So this is basically a quick intro to monitoring in Envoy. This is super important to understand. And if you have to remember one thing from that, response flags. All right. Thumbs up if you guys are ready for the last lab, which is a super, super small debugging exercise, but just to kind of, what we tried to do during this workshop is just to you know, take you through this journey of understanding the basics, understanding metrics, understanding uh, HCM, and now we try to, we're gonna try to put everything together in a quick exercise, we're gonna see if something doesn't work well, how to, how to debug it. All right, click on check, once ready, and let's start debugging the fun part of a software engineer life. Okay, it's gonna take a couple seconds because I have to set up. <laughs> because, because Adam's <laughs> script is doing something evil behind the scenes yeah. that we're not going to tell you about yet. That needs a second to mess up your environment. That's right. <laughs> All right, let's start. Um, great, so I'm gonna go back to the folder always been using for, for this workshop. And now that just makes some calls, right? I mean, expecting everything works well. No, we have problems connecting to Envoy. Envoy is returning something, but I don't know what it is. He's yeah. saying, It looks well, bad. Well, it looks really bad. It's yeah. like no healthy upstream. And well, this time upstream doesn't mean our cluster upstream, just mean like I can, can do anything with your request. 
Okay, uh, well, this is not a fun time to, you know, with our, with our system, so what, what can we do? First thing, again, as I mentioned, um, just kind of an extended version of this debug exercise. First thing to do, if something doesn't happen, now I, now I know that at least Envoy is returning something. For me, in my mind, if Envoy is returning something, I was able to connect to Envoy. So a listener is there. All right, I'm removing the listener possibility from my equation. Now, if I have the listener defined and staking traffic and something is happening, something, so either something is happening within Envoy or something is happening on the, you know, backend side of it. So now let's try to figure out if it's the between Envoy or in the backend. Uh, what you're gonna do, again, check the um, logs. We have axe logs defined already, so this time, uh-oh. Hey, there's a code there. Yeah, we have a bad thing going on. We should not see any code and we see UH, right? So if you see that, I'm sending a, a link here to a documentation. So hopefully it doesn't uh, mess up everything, but I mean, it's super, super small. I'll see. If you guys go on the Envoy documentation, uh, now that we have you add, they can, we can check what it means. Oh, sorry, up. Oh. There you go. It gives us a bit more explanation at least. You know, this is super basic one, right, you add. But you guys can also see the more complicated ones and that's the one that's really, you know, really important hint for us. So, no healthy upstream hosts in upstream cluster in addition to a 503 response code. Okay, well, no healthy upstream hosts. So there is something with endpoint, like there is something going on that I can't connect to my backend. So what you do, I'm gonna go back here and take a look at, well, I'm gonna start taking a look at Grafana first to see what's happening. Uh, I'm gonna check my, well, 15 minutes should be enough and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a look at the upstream one. Well, this is super maxed out, so. I can see everything. Oh, okay, so I'm looking at the upstream one. Uh, I can scroll down here. I'm looking at the upstream cluster and something is telling me that the cluster membership just dipped down, right? Um, the number of healthy members just crashed. No healthy members, we can't connect to the backend. So let's also take a look at the admin interface. If you guys remember when we talked about clusters, we said when we have clusters, we have clusters, definition, plus endpoint, IPs, where we can connect to. And if we look at the upstream one, nothing is there. There's no IPs. So, basically, Envoy doesn't know about your backend. It, know, it knows by definition that I need to, to talk to something called upstream, but I don't have the address, right? I just have the name, no address, kind of situation, right? So. Everything is pointing <coughs> to the fact that Envoy doesn't have a way to connect to my backend. And that can be because of mainly one thing. The service is not there or the health check is failing. And health check of all endpoints are failing. In this case, we have only one IP. So when Envoy evicts this host, there's no way to connect to it at all. So let me just quick check the um, the list of services I have running. Oh, where is my backend service here, right? Super basic, but I think what's important to note here during this quick debugging journey is that Envoy will give you some hints to take a look somewhere else. First, gonna tell you, hey, there's no healthy hosts. Like I have, I'm, I'm having a trouble there connecting something. You're gonna go check your response flag. It tells you a little bit more, hey, uh, maybe there is no endpoint. And then you're gonna go check your Grafana usually. I mean, if you can connect to the admin interface, that's fine. If not, you're gonna connect to Grafana. Check if there is data there, if there is endpoint, if there is, no, if there is, if there is configuration. We saw in Grafana there's like a cluster membership dip, so we saw that something happened, which is bad. From there, you can, you, you can have a hint on what's the next step. In our scenario, we just see that there is no backend service. Well. That's an easy fix, at least for us today. 
is just to start back our upstream. And that's all. If we make a call again, amazing, right? So super quick debug exercise. Uh, go you through the things. <laughs> yeah, that was that was so tough one, right? Yeah, oh yeah. man, that kept me from sleeping all night. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, I want to just uh, start talking about a really important concept here. We saw today the configuration of Envoy, and we can open it again and see how it looks like, right? Today we did something super simple. We just like had an HCM matching on a host, directing traffic to an upstream, to a backend service, and having X, Alt, and TLS on it. That's super straightforward. But we see that it's super complicated configuration. And honestly, maintaining that on file and dealing with this it's no go. You guys can do that. It's and that's one service. Imagine about like you know 200. So this is why Envoy, and we mentioned it earlier, Envoy has a mechanism to push data through uh, what we call uh, an XDS server, okay? Which is basically your control plane server. It's going to be a, a like just a server serving Envoy configuration. Envoy connects to fetch the configuration, automatically update, and be able to route traffic, right? So it's really important to have a control plane. And we know there is a lot of advantages to have, you know, to use a control plane. It's pretty straightforward. If you want to use Envoy for like a simple exposing of one service, it's fine to use a file, I would say. Now, if you are doing, you know, enterprise networking and application exposure and stuff like that, you, need, you care about a couple things. And I'll just, you know, just a, a summary here of things that we really care about is mainly um, I want to simplify the interaction. I want to have a way to just create, I mean, I'm a user. What matters for me, just I want, to, I want to tell the system, hey, expose this service called upstream through um, like a, either a cloud native way of doing it using, you know, CR, CRDs uh, in, in Kubernetes. I create my CR, automatically a, a control plane will pick up the configuration and modify my data plane, which is Envoy, to do this. Um, so it's really important that simplify, the, the way to simplify your configuration. And on, uh, as part of the simplification, another point is uh, mainly uh, configuration validation, right? We were doing modifications here. I mean, we helped you guys using Git to kind of check out the configurations. Imagine if you guys had to write this with YAML and mess up one tab, right? Uh, and, and restart and somehow just push your configuration. That would be a mess, bringing all your infrastructure down for like a real, real silly mistake. So having configuration validation is a key component that control planes uh, provide. You're going to have a CR pushed. This CR is going to be validated by either you know, Kubernetes uh, schemas, in, in the CRs, or you're going to have like a backend type validation that will take this configuration that you provided, compare it to whatever exists. If you see that we're defining another host on top of a host that's already defined, for example, this is a problem. I don't want this. Uh, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to return this configuration to the client, saying, "Hey, this already exists. Figure out your problem." Um, again, also, you know, canary upgrades and so on. If you have a decoupling between your multiple version of Envoy with a control plane, you can always, you know, let's say, it's rare with Envoy to change stuff, but let's say tomorrow they migrate to the new version of Envoy, like we did between V2 and V3, if you guys are familiar with Envoy a bit. It was a change of, app, of API. So if you have a control plane that understands this change, automatically convert an old configuration to a new version of a, an Envoy API, it will make a way smoother upgrade to your system instead of like modifying every single file, uh, you know, thousand times. So with this being said, I really invite you to look at a control plane for your Envoy, okay? So it will avoid you the headache of going through manual change of files or restarts and so on. Um, we have an open source solution called Glue Edge that is a simplified control plane uh, of, on top of Envoy, where you can just create CRs on communities and that transform your uh, CR into an Envoy configuration. Basically, all we did today that can be do, done through, through CRs. Um, all right, so I'm going to give back the mic to 
Jim, so you can uh, give us a bit more, probably a closing statement. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, we have had some uh, we've had some questions come in over the chat, and uh, I think uh, Alex is answering those now. So we appreciate that. All right. Um, if you would like to continue this conversation, so Adam and I will be available immediately after this. We'll also have uh, a number of people who understand Envoy much much better than I do at our uh, at our booth. Um, S10, and we'll be happy to talk to you about uh, more, more details about Envoy there. Um, and you can win a Millennium Falcon Lego set and all that good stuff. All right, now, some of you will be interested in this. If you would like to take the exam to get your Envoy Foundations badge, uh, there are some additional instructions here. Again, you need 80%. You can take the test multiple times, but you'll need a different email address. It's just a Google form. Um, most of the questions are just multiple choice, and they're going to be drawn directly from the material that we've presented uh, during this workshop. So do, if do you, you would like- Do you think we can zoom in a bit? Do you think we can zoom in the, the link there? Or yeah. like, uh, what's that? Just to zoom in a bit, I don't know if- Oh, oh I see, I see. Yeah, um, so um, th this, this, is a, uh, this is a program that, uh, that we've been running for a while at Solo with a number of open source technologies, Istio, uh, eBPF being the most notable ones. But uh, if you see the link there at the bottom or you can scan the QR code, um, the link to get to the Google form that is the exam is uh, bit.ly slash envoy dash exam. Again, bit.ly dash slash envoy dash exam. And so you can, uh, you can do that. You'll also have access if you want to continue to play around with your environments and maybe explore some things that you didn't get to do as deeply as you would like in the course of the discussion here. You can actually restart the track if you would like to and uh, you have access to it for probably another two and a half hours or so. Um, and certainly if you, you know, if you want to get access to it later, just contact us at Solo. We can, we can set you up to be able to, to do it on your own. Okay. And uh, again, did I mention we're hiring? So yep, you're passionate about application networking. We would love to talk with you about, uh, uh, about working at Solo. Okay, I think we have. Yeah, I, I wanna really mention something. That yeah. was like a one-on-one -on -one basic debugging. Yes. Uh, foundation and Envoy has a lot more to offer at different levels. And we're planning on doing something more intermediate and something more expert in the, in the future. So yeah, yeah. please just uh, check out our website or reach us to us. I'll tell you if there's any update there. But yeah, we hope to see each one of you in our next workshop, uh, Envoy, uh, Envoy workshop. We have about five minutes left. If there's anyone who has any questions you'd like to ask at this time, uh, there are microphones set up in the aisles. Feel free to uh, ask us most anything. All right, go, yep, go ahead. Uh, can, we, can we get the mics live up the front mic live here? Okay, tr try again. Um, I, uh, thanks for your great uh, workshop. Um, I have a question or something that uh, was always bothering me. Was it possible to actually see the requests coming into Envoy and uh, debug them? Because this was always something that I didn't manage to do that. As, as, Go ahead. So when you say see them, you mean like, uh, like like I just want to understand, like, what do you mean by by see them? Because you can obviously through metrics, you can always see multiple filters. Sometimes expose different different uh, metrics, right? Yeah. So if it's a filter chain, you can always see that the listener got the connection, um, and then you can go to every single filter and see if it intercepted the connection. Now, if you're looking into like a specific request and how it's flying into the filter chain, definitely logs, right? Uh, well, access logs, it's something simple, but you can always turn on debug logs, uh, de debug logs sorry, on, on Envoy itself. Envoy, every time it intercepts a request, it's, it's pushed like um, a, a request uh, ID, right? So using that request ID that you're trying to track, you're gonna be able to track it down all the way down to, uh, to basically your, your backend. So I would say 
blogs is is the way to do it. Yeah, let, let me offer one other piece of advice too. There there is an there is a filter in the Envoy library called the tap oh, filter. Oh, tap filter, yes. And the tap filter basically allows you at any point to tap into the request chain and to see what the state of the request is at that moment. So that might be one that I, I think to address your specific question, the tap filter might be something that would help you. Okay, great. Thanks. All right, certainly. Thank you. All right, anyone else? All right, let's let's put a wrap on it then. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, as I said at the opening, we really appreciate talking to, to three-dimensional people, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to to seeing you at the booth and seeing you around the show. Have a great conference. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.